Lynn Emanuel, and happy Sunday. This is our birthday calendar for the week. On today, Sunday, May 17th, Giselle Jackson and Denard Lee. On Monday, May 18th, Alexis Hampton. Tuesday, May 19th, Reggie Hall and Nicholas Hester. Wednesday, May 20th, Maurice Crocker, Zule Harrison, and Solomon Quick. On Thursday, May 21st, Carrie Smith. On Friday, May 22nd, Patricia Sadler. And on Saturday, May 23rd, there were no birthdays listed. We, the members of Emmanuel Baptist Church, would like to wish you a happy, blessed, and safe birthday. Thought for the week. If it doesn't challenge you, it won't change you. Have an awesome week and continue to remain safe. Good morning, Emmanuel. It is a pleasure to be before you today. We hope that all is well in your household and that you're staying safe. First of all, we'd like to thank you for your gifts and your tithing that you've given to this church during this difficult time. So on behalf of the ministerial staff, the deacons, trustees, and finance committee, we'd like to thank you and urge you to continue in your giving. We have three methods or three ways that you can give to a manual. We have where you can mail in or come by and drop off your tithes and offerings. We also have PayPal that you can get to from the website. And we have a new mobile app called Tithely. That's Tithely. All of which you can get to from our website. So on behalf of Emmanuel Baptist Church, we hope that you stay safe, you stay blessed, and continue in all that you're doing. And soon and very soon, we will all be back together where we can tear down this church and have a, and have a Holy Ghost good time. <laughs>
were saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? Looking up, they saw that the stone had been rolled away. Let us pray. Our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest friend, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock we stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking saying God we come to you this morning just as we know how first to say thank you in spite of everything that is happening around us in our nation and in this world we cannot help but to give you praise because you have kept us and you continue to preserve us day by day now, Lord, I ask that you meet every need in this congregation. God, you're able, and we know that you're willing. So, God, touch each and every life that is watching right now. Fill us where we need to be filled. Heal us where we need to be healed. And Lord, guide our footsteps. God, help us to navigate through this unprecedented time. And if you do this, God, we will be so careful to give your name the praise, honor, and glory. It is in Jesus' name we all pray. And all the people of God said, Amen. If I would, I would like to use simply for a sermon title, Who Will Roll Away the Stone for Us? Several Sundays ago, we celebrated the resurrection of Jesus on Easter, and soon we will be coming up on Pentecost Sunday, which is the anniversary of the church. Easter is the most important season on the church's calendar, and yet we find ourselves not being able to celebrate like we always do because of unprecedented and unparalleled barriers. In a season where we would normally find ourselves as a church celebrating planning and preparing to commemorate the Holy Spirit coming down and filling the saints with power to witness in the book of Acts, we have found ourselves in a pandemic. To make matters worse, this is a pandemic that has affected the black community in disproportionate rates because of health disparities higher unemployment rates and inequality. And in the midst of all that we as a people are going through, we find ourselves coping with and trying to advocate justice for the undeserved murders of Ahmaud Arbery and Breonna Taylor. Although we celebrated Easter a few Sundays ago, This does not feel like the other side of the resurrection. I don't know about you, but I can't help but wonder why things are the way that they are. I can't help but ask the question of how are we going to fix these major issues that plague our society. Some of you are wondering how are you going to make it when the odds are stacked against you. 
because there are so many unanswered questions that you and I have, I had to go back and re-examine the Easter story, if you don't mind. At the end of the gospel account of Mark, you will find three people who are facing unprecedented and unparalleled times themselves. Jesus, who was wrongfully convicted of crimes and accusations he did not commit, was executed by way of crucifixion. You know the story. I can't imagine how his friends, family, and followers felt when they saw the one that loved them, healed them, taught them, and restored them die such a painful and wrongful death. The text mentions three devout, devout disciples of Jesus who were there from the time, from the beginning of Jesus' crucifixion up to his burial. Their names were Mary, who was the mother of one of the 12 more known disciples, Mary Magdalene, and Salome. While many of the other disciples ran away, ran away and hid because of fear and disappointment, these three sisters stayed and watched. They watched as Joseph of Arimathea took Jesus' body down and buried him. The three disciples wanted to be there after Jesus died because they wanted to take a mental note of where he was being buried. And the reason for this is because they wanted to come back after the Sabbath was over to honor him by anointing his body with spices to seal up his wounds and delay decomposition. They watched as Jesus' body was wrapped in linen cloth and placed in a carved-out rock. Somebody said, they placed my rock inside of a rock. And they saw about 20 men roll a massive stone in front of the entrance of the rock. It took 20 men to roll this massive stone in front of the entrance of the tomb. When the Sabbath was over, the three devout disciples got up to travel back to the place where Jesus was buried. While they were on their journey, someone thought to ask the question, who will roll away the stone for us? from the entrance of the tomb. This is a smart and legitimate question. Uh, it's a question of logistics and strategy. They had planned, they had a goal in mind. All they wanted to do was honor the body of Christ. And yet there was a major barrier that stood in their way. I wish I had some help in here. Many of us know how it feels to just want to do the right thing or, or just do what we know to do. But somewhere along this journey of life, we have found ourselves with barriers and situations that would cause some of us to turn around and go back to where we were instead of moving forward. One of the reasons why I have such great respect for these three women in the text is because they saw, again, 20 men roll the stone in front of the tomb. But because their love for Christ was much more heavier and weightier than that stone, they went anyhow. I wonder if I have any anyhow Christians in the building. I wonder if I have any anyhow Christians at home watching me right now because no matter what 
I may face, I'm going on anyhow. No matter what stones and barriers, I'm not ready yet. Hold, hold my mule, I'm not ready. No matter what stones and barriers that may be ahead of us, I'm still going to serve the Lord. Death may be all around. Tragedies may be commonplace. With all kinds of diseases, people are slipping away. But I've made up in my mind that I'm going to honor the body of Christ because he's done so much for me. That's why I'm going to continue to serve the best way I can. I'm going to, to keep being an advocate for justice. I'm, I'm going to continue raising my children to be who God has called them to be. I'm going to continue to help those in need as best as I can because my love for Christ runs much more heavier and deeper than any obstacle that may stand in my way. Somebody said trouble in my way. I had to cry sometime. I had to lay awake at night, but, but that's all right, because I'm going on anyhow. This, Emmanuel, and I'm actually almost done, is the first lesson I learned from these three sisters. First lesson is despite our questions, doubts, and fears, we got to keep going. We have to keep moving forward. Even in the middle of this pandemic, we have to keep moving forward. And the second lesson that we can learn from the three disciples is that many barriers and fears that we have are really just in our minds. Can I say that again? Uh, 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 the, many of the barriers and fears that we have are in our minds. The text says that they were saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us? And verse 4 says, looking up, they saw that the stone had been rolled away. That's good news to somebody because although it, it, although it was extremely large, the problem that they foresaw and anticipated upon arriving at the tomb of Jesus was already taken care of. If I could pause and testify for a quick minute, and then I'm going to take my seat. Several years ago, I had the opportunity and the chance to serve as a youth pastor at a church in Raleigh. And I served there for about a year and a half. And when my time was up, I decided to leave to pursue another ministry assignment. And years, a few years went by, and I decided to enroll at Wake Forest University School of Divinity here in this great city of Winston-Salem. And because I decided to enroll and I, and I got accepted, that meant that I had to move from the Raleigh-Durham area all the way to Winston-Salem. And how many of you know that moving is not cheap? I had to find an apartment, and, and because I had to find an apartment, I had to have a down payment on the apartment, and I had to pay the first month's rent. And I also had to pay for a moving truck, and, and, and there were other things I had to pay for that my pockets could not, could not handle. I was running out of money, and I did not know where, where money was coming from. Until one day, the pastor at the church where I served called me randomly, and he asked how I was doing, and I said I was doing fine. I didn't tell him what I was going through. I told him that I enrolled in seminary and I will be heading to Winston-Salem. Although money was funny, I did not know how I was going to be able to pay my first month's rent. I told him all was well. 
And he said, before you move to Winston-Salem, I want you to stop by the church one Sunday morning to see the people. And so I decided to go once early one Sunday morning to, to a service. And during the offering, the pastor called me to the front of the congregation. And I, at the time, I had no idea how much of an impact I had on the church. And so he called me up to the front and he said, this is Jamarcus who has served faithfully here as a youth pastor in the past and he'll be going to Winston-Salem. This morning's offering will be dedicated and given to him. My God, my God. I, all right, I feel like the disciples in the text because by the time God reveals to me the miracle that he had performed, that problem that I had did not even matter no more. There may be some of you who are facing barriers and obstacles right now. You may be wondering how you're going to pay your bills. You may be asking, will things ever get back to normal? Can I ever go back to school? Will I ever finish my degree? Will my family ever be saved? Will justice ever roll down like a mighty stream? All I came to tell you is that it is no secret what the Lord can do. But what he's done for others, he will do the same for you. I just want to tell you, look up to the hills from which cometh your help. Because all your help cometh from the Lord. The Lord which made heavens and the earth. Who will roll the stone away? Somebody said, only God, only God can do it. Only God can save. Only God can heal. Only God can deliver. Only God can set free. In the name of Jesus, God can and God will roll the stone away. God can and God will roll away injustice. God can and God will roll away your depression. God will roll away your suicidal thoughts. God will roll away your toxic relationships. God will roll away condemnation. Is there anybody here that know that God will? And God can. Anybody try to? I try for myself. And I know. I know that God will. And God can. Whatever you need him to do, God specializes in things impossible. And he'll do what no other power, Holy Ghost power, can do. I pray that this message has blessed each and every one of you watching on this morning. And if you're not saved, if you don't know Jesus for yourself, if you have barriers obstacles, stones in your life that you can't seem to roll away yourself. I just want to let you know that there is a God who loves you. He loves you and he is available because God specializes in the impossible. Hallelujah. Will you come to Christ today?
God specializes. God specializes. God specializes. God specializes. God specializes. God specializes. And he'll do what no other power, power can do. Holy Ghost power can do. Hallelujah. If you have accepted Christ in your life, I want you to pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I confess with my mouth and with my heart that I need you. I need you, God. Others have failed me. Systems have failed me. But I heard that you will never fail. So God, come into my heart come into my life rearrange things in my life God please roll away these stones that I can't roll away myself now God I ask you to fill me with your Holy Spirit endow me with your power your power to live right, your power to walk right, your power to talk right, your power, God, to be a witness of the miracles that you will perform in my life. And now, God, I thank you for saving me. I thank you, God, for raising me. And I thank you, God, for keeping me. In Jesus' name, amen. And if you accepted Christ today, just know that all of heaven is rejoicing. God bless you, Emmanuel. Be encouraged and continue to hold to God's unchanging hand. Amen.